When I did, when I did the Britain's Got Talent, the obviously the semi-final and the final, it was in the pandemic year in 2020, and we didn't know all the way through. We didn't really know whether to have an audience or no audience, and in the end, it was a Zoom audience, which meant nothing because it just meant there was people at a telly and a bar. Oh, yeah, and it, yeah. it, you, you couldn't entertain them. You couldn't really use them. I utilised them a little bit, a few gags about my dad not being able to log onto the system, etc. But. The way I handled it is going right back to when I used to do medieval banquets because I used to entertain a lot of them and sometimes... You'd have come a lot, weren't you? Yeah, Something I was like, a camel oh, yeah, for years. Yeah. And when I used to do medieval banquets, the occasion, I'll say occasion, most of them, they just turn into like food riots because people go to med and used to go to medieval and think, oh, it's where they throw food, everyone throws food. And they just think that's normal. Yeah. So you'd be on there and you know, you'd be trying to do, I'd be trying to do my juggling act and a chicken wing would come past my head, you know what I mean? Next thing, a charlie cake uh, whizzed past me and I'm just been, I'm trying to do my act. And so the heckling never ever bothered me. But when I did the BGT, the, on occasions like that, you'd find a table of some nice people, of about four people on one table who actually were there for the entertainment. And you'd end up going over to them just to entertain them. And that's how I did it. I had to get into that mindset of entertaining the, the corporate, if you like, that after dinner gig. Oh, yeah. No one's listening apart from a few people. Just entertain them. Uh, how come you done it that year? Because I could, I, I'm sure you'll have been asked every year yeah. since it started. Yeah, yeah, how how yeah. come you done it that eight, year? For eight years, they asked it. Eight years ago, I'll say maybe ten years ago now, when, it, when, I, when I finally did it, I'd caved in. Because I, I can tell, because I've, I've got the messages from one of the producers and he used to message me every single year yeah. after the first year when I was going to do it and at the very last minute they pulled me from the show and said oh we don't think we, we, we want you on this year we, we do it for next year instead I said well if you pull me now I said I'm not going I'm unlikely I said you messed me about a lot I've been for meetings in London and all sorts and uh, they said if you don't put me on the show this year I won't do it again anyway they didn't and then Next year, inevitably phones me. Eventually, he came up to Manchester. We had a meeting there. He said, oh, please do. I think you do really well. And, you know, we promise, you know, if it, if it goes really badly, we won't show it on telly. Or, we won't, you know, we, no, there's no guarantees of it or anything like oh, that. Yeah, I know yeah. people talk about, you know, oh, you, you will guarantee you to get this far. And there's nothing like that. But what they do guarantee is at least if you do really badly, they won't show on the telly. Because they used so, to have tumbleweed, yeah. didn't they? Like newer acts yeah, would go exactly, on it. And that yeah. be like, oh. were, it's harder. The, for comics, it's harder for them to get a track comics yeah. onto that show because it is such a hard medium for comics to get their act across anyway especially like a juggling dog or something well. yeah exactly That's yeah. What I, mean, well, yeah. I, I actually texted him one, one of the years uh, i felt awful after this but i finally done it and done so well is it uh, i found one of my messages to me says how about this year this is about four or five years ago and i went i'll come back to you as soon as i can learn how to juggle with puppies or something like that and uh and then that was it that was the end of that communication that year <laughs> And then eventually what made what finally came me in was, first of all, 2020. Right, I thought, oh, that's got a good ring to it. I think it's going to be a good year. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit wrong on that one, wasn't I? Right, so 2020. And then the second thing was the pantomime that I do in Blackpool on it was at the Grand Theatre. It's a lovely little theatre, beautiful theatre, and I've done there for 19 years. And suddenly the big theatre, the Opera House, decided they were going to put on a panto against us. So they got Shirley Ballas was going to be in it, Cinderella. Right. And they announced it just as we opened our pantomime the year before, so it be the Peter Pan of 2019. And so there's all this hype about this pantomime coming to town. So it's going to be Battle of the Pantos with a 3,000 seat venue against the 1,000 seat venue. And who's going to win, who's going to, and I just thought, you know what, all I can do here is give us as much publicity as we possibly can. So I'm going to cave in for the sake of Panto and I'm going to do Britain's Got Talent and give myself five minutes of TV promotion so I can promote the Panto. And then obviously what happened, I never imagined. First of all, to get to the semi-final, then the, that semi-final being dragged on to September and then October before we did the final. It's normally over and done with by May. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And so it, it basically took up the whole of 2020 and ended up with, you know, now being, you know, Britain's third most talented man for a brief period for two years. But I held the title for two years because I didn't do it last year in 2021, did they? Well, I, I can remember being on because it's the only time I ever watched you. Yeah, I remember because yeah, you were on, I thought, yeah, I'll have to watch because yeah, yeah, Steve's yeah, on and stuff yeah. like that. Because I was like you with the comedians, you always just see they're stitching them up, didn't they? Yeah. And like, oh, oh, that's terrible. And you can make a comedy go down. Like, comedy's not like music, you can't just go on, it's going to be all right. Is it comedy has to be set up? Well, it's the timing as well. Time is so critical. And when you're on stage, sometimes you can do a gag and 
if someone uh, if there's an editor in a studio afterwards and they go oh, there's a bit of a bit pause there I'll cut that pause out yeah I'll cut that and, oh, I don't think he needs that like, that line there oh he's only waffle he's only doing some waffle but little, that waffle that little uh, mumble that he might make might be key to the gag do you yeah, know what I mean yeah yeah so yeah anyway so that's that's the reason I did it really was thinking, what was, was Sam and Cal like I, you know, he's the one, because of obviously, because he, he ended up injured himself, fell off his bike, so I never really met him properly, apart from the bits on stage, but it was lovely. But I did meet his brother. His brother works for some magazine and did an interview with him. And it was weird, because he sounds exactly the same. So I got this phone call for this magazine interview, and it's just basically Simon Cowell on the phone. I bet he doesn't look like him, though, does he? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what he looks like, to be honest. I don't know. Right, right. His, the, his trousers slightly lower. Oh, it's just, it's his face now, isn't it? It's fit. I don't it's know. Hire the trousers. Look on Netflix now. That picture they've got of his face. It looks like you know when yeah, you've been yeah. for a night out and you've had too yeah, many yeah, and like you're trying to look yeah, sober yeah, yeah, and you think, yeah. fucking hell. It must I have to say the rest of them. All, all of them were brilliant though. And also, I suppose we got to know them a little bit better because they had to carry the show a bit well, more. Well, didn't well, they? well, we were just in a studio filming the, the, the semi-final and the final itself. We just literally, the, 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 all the crew are there with masks on and, uh, you know, you've got the cameraman, but it's a silent studio and there's only them four sat at a table and you, and you'd have to set up, you know, when, you, when you've got your, an act like Ryan, you've got to make sure all your props, etc., in the right position. So there's Amanda hold, uh, holding, all right, Steve, how are you doing? You ready? You ready for it? And I go, yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. Oh, good, dude, good luck. And, and um, David Walliams, the loveliest fellow. I was just going to say, they, oh. they seem all right. Like, it's oh, weird because I don't think you can really. hide. If Alicia you're... kept singing this song to me, which I still not looked up. It's some reggae classic or something that, she was really, she used to sing it every time she saw me. She just go, Steve Ryle, he is Ryle, Steve Ryle. I'd sing this song to her. And I've not to look, I've written somewhere, I've written down where it's from. And I've got videos of her singing it to me and that. But yeah, she was brilliant. And then uh, it was Ashley Banjo, of course, who stepped in as well. Oh, did I? Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. In fact, my episode, the semi final, was the one that caused all the controversy because they did. And it's mad because I was there watching them do this filming of, because um, they got diversity on the first semi-final. And they did this all with the Black Lives Matters. Ah, yeah, and, yeah. and it ended up being the most controversial thing. On and I'm just watching it going, ah, flipping it, they're good, aren't they? I just sat, in, you know, because he wasn't aired for another week. He didn't go out on telly. Yeah. So I'd seen it and thinking nothing. And then a week later, the, the Twitter and all the social media is going absolutely mad about Ashley Banjo says this. And, and then the viewing figures for my episode was just something like 10 to 12 million people, something like that, who watched it. Because, oh, but then because of that, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, well, you're watching me as well, aren't you? <laughs> so. Did, does it feel weird though, that? Because you went from like, like normal comedian doing yeah. the panto on that yeah. to that. Was there a bit of a like a culture shock or something like that? Because I said to my missus, if it had to be someone, it'd be all right for you. Yeah. Because you haven't got them like skeletons in the. Yeah. It's not like you've you know killed what? prostitutes or all like well, that. You know, I think that's why I did so well because I really. I went on it and I, and I said from the moment I, I, I was going to, I agreed to do it, I thought, I, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it to, to enjoy it. I've done yeah. TV stuff in the, in the past and not enjoyed it. And I felt the pressure of the gig, if you like. Yeah. And I thought, I'm just going to, I'm going to have a right laugh with it. And I'm going to be nice to everyone, be lovely with it, and, and have a laugh with everybody. And it worked to be fair because, every t every, like I said, with the judges, right down from the judges, right to the, the people who make the cups of tea, you know, and the runners and researchers on the programme. But what I did find, what did surprise me, was what a family atmosphere it is on that programme. Right. It wasn't so, in terms of like you, like you say, you know, did it feel like you know, egotistical or anything like that? Did it feel like it brought? No, because it just felt like we were all mates and all, all, all the acts involved in the final, especially, we all still keep in touch, got a big WhatsApp group and we'll still say, send each other messages, how are you doing? And then, right down from John who won it, right up to, you know, to all the other contestants who are in it.